God, it's yes. Hallelujah. Even if we understand what's going on in this time, God, we say yes to you. For you know the way that we take. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You told us that if we trust you in all of our ways and lean not to our own understanding, you would direct our paths. And God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you that you won't lead us astray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may have to cry some nights. We may be a little frustrated at times, but God, we know that everything that you do is right and good. Hallelujah. We thank you for healing tonight. We thank you for deliverance tonight. We thank you for breakthrough tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you for ways being made. Hallelujah. We trust you. 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 Even when we can't trace you, we trust you. Even though we don't know what's coming next, God, we trust you. Hallelujah, because your track record is proven. Hallelujah, you made ways time and time again. Hallelujah, you've opened doors time and time again. And God, we praise you. Hallelujah, in advance for what is coming. Hallelujah, for we know what's coming is better than what's been, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll forever be careful to give your name the praise. The glory and the honor. God, touch all of the leadership that works in this place, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing in and through them. God, bless every family that's represented in this place, God. God, that may be present and that may be away from us right now. God, we ask right now a special blessing for our pastor. God, in the name of Jesus. God, continue to keep his mind, keep his heart. Keep his spirit, God. Continue to order his steps, God. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're doing in this ministry. We thank you for what you're doing in this hallowed house. God, we'll forever be careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise that's due unto you. Hallelujah. And we clap our hands, knowing that we have the confidence that it is done, that it is so. Hallelujah. We lift our voices in praise. We lift our voices and praise everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We claim it done. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come on right there, everybody that can. Rest on your feet with your hands lifted and your mouths open. Magnifying and exalting and giving adoration to the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. Come on, take some time and do that tonight. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voices tonight. Come on. Lift up your voices tonight. Come on. He's a great and a wonderful God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice tonight. Lift up your voice tonight. Come on, lift up your voice tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Come on, bask in his presence tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Yee! Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy tonight. Worthy of your praise that comes from your lips. You ain't got to wait on me to tell you what you need to say to him because you know what he's worth to you. Hallelujah. And we recognize that if he doesn't do another thing, he's already done enough. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. We're delighted to be here tonight. Another opportunity to praise and worship our awesome God. To our listening audience, we are delighted that you decided to join us tonight. 
for a Wednesday night experience here at Zion City Prayer Faith Temple Church of God in Christ. We're led by none other than our Bishop Jonathan G. Willis. We thank God for him and also First Lady Felicia Willis. Oh, how many of you are excited to be here tonight? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. So if you could, just for a brief moment, we're going to go on to praise and worship. Hallelujah. Before we receive the word tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray your name. I pray your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Of my praise, you are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Everybody, just put your hands together like this. I see a lot of you are sitting down, but if you can, just get on your feet tonight. Come on, let's lift up our voices. Come on. Hey! Come on, lift your voice right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, hey! Come on, lift up a praise tonight. Come on. Hallelujah! Come on. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the 
the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I pray, I pray your name. I pray your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. 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 You're consistently the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, I pray your name. I pray your name. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I wanna see you. I wanna see. Come on, open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. light of your glory shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing, as we sing, holy, 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 you are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. People may change, but he won't. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, and I pray your name. I pray your name. Come on, let's do it. Give him praise. Praise the Lord for the praise and worship team that's before us today. Hallelujah. He's truly Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. There's no one like him, amen. No one to be compared to him in the earth. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. 
omega, the beginning and the end. How can something, someone be the beginning and the end? That means time collapses. And he's eternal. Amen. Hallelujah. And he's omnipresent. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. I give honor to uh, my wife. Um, I give honor to Bishop Jonathan Willis in his absence. Amen. First Lady Willis, to the beautiful family. God allowed them to come back from vacation safely. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And to the apple of God, I all the flock of God, the elders, the ministers. You made it here tonight. Can somebody just lift their hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Come on, if you at home, say thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. I feel the presence of the Lord so heavily. He's so special. He's a mighty God. And I want to let you know look at your neighbor, say, everything's going to be all right. I, I don't know who needed to hear that tonight. I don't know who's been battling with something or struggling with something, but I got a feeling. That it is. Yeah. Everything. God told me to tell me to tell you it's gonna be alright. I'm trying to I'm trying to get started on my lesson, but I, I'm telling you tonight. It's going to be all right. I'm telling you tonight that it's going to be all right. I'm telling you tonight that it's going to be all right. Hey! Oh! 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 Some of you been in warfare. Hey, glory. Some of y'all been battling with depression and oppression and old demons coming up on you and trying to bring back past stuff but I came to let you know tonight as the word of my uh, of my father Satan is defeated and God is exalted and every knee shall bow every black knee every white knee every Chinese knee shall bow If you don't bow now, you're going to bow later. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord Woo! to the glory of God the Father. I better get into my lesson. But I just had to drop that little uh, raindrop. Boom. Look at your neighbor say, boom. That's how quick it's going to happen for you. Suddenly. Hey. You've been in a drought season, but the rain, the rain. The rain is coming. Look at your neighbor say, the rain, the rain. The rain is about the rain. It's been a dry season for somebody. But the rain is coming. How? The rain is coming. Can't you smell it? Can't you smell the concrete? Can't you sense it in your spirit? After a drought, the rain is coming. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain, Jesus. We've been in a dry season. Send the rain. Send it, Lord. Send it. Open the heavens. Let the rain. Hey, come on, lift your hands. The rain is coming. I said the rain is coming. Hey. Rain is coming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. 
But the Holy Ghost said the rain is coming. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to send the rain. Hey. Oh, no. Y'all got to stop it now. We in Bible study. But after you have suffered for a while, I know you've been suffering. I know sickness has hit your body. But they that desire to live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. But the glory that's coming out of this I'm telling you tonight what you've been going through is a test of your faith it's not real faith until it's been tested by the fire it's not real gold until it's been tested by the fire the more the heat the more pure the gold becomes and some of you you've been you've been in the refiner's fire, you've been wondering why you have so much pressure going on. Some of you have been uncomfortable in your spirit. You've been a little agitated, catching attitudes with people. And you're wondering, like, why am I get, getting these attitudes and stuff? That's because God is moving you out of your comfort zone and shifting you to your rightful place. I said he's shifting you into your rightful place in him. You can't stay where you are. Look at your name say, I can't stay where I am. Uh -uh. I, I, can't, I can't stay, I can't stay in the old house I used to be in. I can't visit the old places and the capacities of my mind that begins to bring back old emotions, old feelings, old stuff. I can't visit that no more. Romans 6 and 5 says, If we have been planted or united together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, look at your neighbor and say, your old man is crucified with him. Now that means the moment that Jesus was crucified, we were in him, and at that moment, our old man was crucified with him. Oh, my God. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Our old man is crucified with him that the, that the body of sin, I said the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? So, so if we go to Romans chapter 6 verse 5, go there right quick. Oh, my God. Come on, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Romans 6, chapter 5. No, no, chapter 6, verse 5, verse 6 now. Knowing that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. If you've been buried with him in baptism and raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection, that's it. the Bible said all things are what? passed away and behold all things have become what? New. Now when we go to Romans chapter 6 verse 7 the Bible says he that is dead is what? He that is dead is what? That, meant, that means that sin has been rendered powerless in your life. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Look at your neighbor say my identity is in Christ. Ha. Knowing that our old man been raised from the dead, know, now know that he that is dead is freed from sin. Now verse 8 says, now if we be dead with Christ, I mean when he died, we died too. Guess what? We believe that we shall also what? Live with him. Uh-huh. Verse 9, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead does what? Dive no more. Look at your neighbor say once and for all. 
He, didn't, he don't have to keep dying. He died once. Look at your name. Say, once and for all. Now look at the next part of it. Death has what? No more dominion over him. Verse 10, for in that he died, he died unto sin once. Did I say once? Did he have to keep being sacrificed like the lambs and the doves and the pigeons and the bullocks back in the day? How many times? Woo. But in that he liveth, he liveth where? He liveth unto God. Now, I like verse 11 because it says, because of this, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be what? Dead indeed to sin. But what? Alive unto God through who? Reckon yourself to be dead. You can be seated. No, you don't have to if you want. Reckon yourself. That means you gotta have, you gotta put on a certain mindset. It don't mean now I'm, I'm not saying that you may not miss the mark. But what I'm saying is, that's not who you are anymore. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creation, some of the things say. So we not, I want to, I want to, oh man. Knowing this, being acquainted with this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed or rendered powerless, that henceforth we should not serve sin for he that is dead is freed from sin. Our old man, used three times in scriptures, Romans 6 and 6. Romans, I mean Colossians 3 and 9. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. The third verse is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22. That ye put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the Deceitful us. What is the old man? I'm so glad you asked. The old man is that, that self that is patterned after, after the first Adam. In theological terms, Ad, the first Adam is called the federal headship, which means he, he, he represents the whole entire human race because we came from who? Adam and Eve. So we... We have that part of us deeply ingrained in rebellion against God and his commands. We must realize that we are born with a sinful nature. And we inherited it from Adam because Romans backs it up by saying, Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 12 says, let us, let us, let us know, excuse me, that sin entered into the world through what? One man. And death through sin. And this way death came to all people. So that one disobedient act that happened in the, where was it? What happened? In Genesis. What happened? They ate of what? The tree of knowledge. Now, how, yeah, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. What was the other tree called? The tree of life. So they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when God told them not to. So after that, what happened? They were cursed. No, well, they were, they were banned from the garden. He cursed the snake and he cursed the ground. All right? But they were banned from the garden of Eden. Right? What do you think, why do you think that God, we talked about this in our theological class last night. Why do you think that God banned them from that garden? So they wouldn't eat of the tree of life. What would have happened if they ate of the tree of life? They would have lived forever, but in a fallen state. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Diane. That's why he had to get us, get them out of there. Because, you know, once they ate their fruit, they, everything started looking good then. <laughs> everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he had to get them out of their garden. Amen? 
So the Bible lets us know that even children have a sin nature. Folly, Proverbs 22 and 15, folly is bound up in the what? The heart of a child. Now, y'all pray for my youngest son, Asaph. He got a fighting little thing about him. He likes to fight. He must have got that from his grandmother, who's originally from Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> I love you, mother. <laughs> my mom grew up in the rough part. She has been in a few battles, <laughs> block fights and all, you know. Mr. Diane, no, she know my mother. She tell you, she's the sweetest looking thing, but she done knocked some people out, amen. And my grandfather was a professional boxer, her father, so um, her whole family could fight. They were known as the Porchers. She didn't mess with the Porchers. My uncles, both of them are veterans in the Army. Like, they just tough guys. They had, you didn't mess with the Porchers. They, they knew that they could fight. So that's, you know, but that's just a part of the sinful nature, amen. God saved my mother, thank God, that, or else I wouldn't be here, amen? She met my father, amen, in a convocation in Baltimore, an organization called the Pentecostal Faith Church, and I came two years later, amen? <laughs> but Romans chapter 7, verse 18 says, for I know that in me that is in my flesh, look at your flesh, what do we say about our flesh? It's a what? It's a mess. That is in our flesh dwell of what? No good thing. You can't trust yourself. I say you cannot trust yourself. It play, the Bible says place no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. No confidence. A little bit or none. The Bible says place <laughs> no confidence in the flesh. Amen? Because the flesh only wants to do what it wants to do. Amen? It, it wants to be pleased from the pulpit to the door. Amen? So we see clearly that we are born sinners simply because of that we are unable in our natural state called the flesh to do good in order to please God. Romans 8 and 8 says those that who are in the realm of flesh cannot please God. Knowing this, that our, our being acquainted with this is that our old man is crucified with him. The word crucified is past tense. Hello? Signifying that it is a past event. The, Paul, the Apostle Paul is literally explaining exactly what happened to us when we as believers died spiritually with Christ. It wasn't a physical death. It was a spiritual death. When Christ was crucified, we also experienced a crucifixion. Our old man was spiritually crucified in the same way that Christ was physically crucified on the cross. The crucifixion of the old man is something that God did in us. Ain't nothing you did. No one in this room nailed the old man to the cross. Jesus himself did it. Like Elder Wendy said, he nailed the ordinances, the accusations. Right? Right? Jesus himself did, and we are told to account it to our mind. How often do we account that to our mind? How often do we have Jesus even on our mind? Yeah. Remember. That's why we take communion, right? To remember what Christ has done. But it don't just got to be on a Sunday. It said it's off. I used to, this lady at work, she took communion just about every day. And she looked just as healthy and, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's power in that and the obedience of it. The system of the law tries to reform the old man, fix up the old man, behavior modification. But the, the, the system of grace understands that the old man can never be reformed. The old man can never be reformed. What has to happen to the old man? Oh, it, it can't be, he can't be reformed. He has to be put to death. Die. Why did Paul, what did Paul say? Come on, Bible scholars. I what? Say it loud. I die daily. He must be put to death, and for you as a believer... The old man dies with Jesus on the cross. Paul lets us know in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. 
That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives where? In me. And, and it goes on to say, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, by relying on, by completely trusting in the Son of God. What does our trust have to be? Not in ourselves, not in our flesh. Our, our trust has to be in the Son of who? The Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. No, I... That's, that's our state in Adam. We know by faith we've been placed into Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, say it with confidence, I'm in Christ. Now I want to scoot real quickly over to Colossians. Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to get out your way. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Is there a way we can get that on the screen? A screen, excuse me. I know it's on the screen, on the screen. If not, it's okay. Someone read it real loud. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Come on, read it real loud. Let's go back old school. If ye then be risen... With who? Seek those things which are above. Did that scripture say seek the things in the earth? Did it say seek the things that are in your phone? Did it say seek the things that are on Amazon? <laughs> Did it say seek the things that, you, that are in the store? From the mindset that I've been risen with Christ, now my desire has to change. Seek. What does that word seek mean? Search. Have you ever had something so valuable and that you had to search for it? Now, tell me what kind of search that is when you're looking for something valuable. Hey, where you put my ring at? <laughs> you looking with passion and intensity. You ever misplace your car keys and you gotta get to work? Oh my God. Think back, think back. Where I have at last? Jesus. Right in your pocket. Lord, have mercy. Then you, then you uh, tell your boss traffic was a little heavy. <laughs> no good in the way you was late because you, you didn't have stuff in place. <laughs> or you stopped at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Seek. <laughs> Woo. God forgive us. <laughs> forgive us for telling those little wa white li whitewash lies, half truths. Seek. Seek is a strong desire. That means it's a, it's a man, I got to find this. How much intensity do we do that for God? I'm not talking about coming to church. Because if you're depending on just a Sunday message and a Wednesday night Bible study to get you through the week, it's time to elevate your thinking. Do you hear me? Oh, if I could just make it to Sunday. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, I'm a, this, this word from Sunday is going to encourage me the rest of the week. No, we believers, we need to be in this book, the Bible, how, how often? Every day. And we, yeah. Every day. If you ain't been doing it, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you to start doing it. And all of us has missed the mark in that. Ain't nobody in here that, that, that have done it perfectly you know, for a consistent, you know, sometimes we falter in that. Let's get better with that because you're going to need to defend your faith. You're going to need to give a reason for the hope that's in you 
So if another religion come up to you and say, what do you think about Jesus? You got to say more than he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> they ain't going to know what you're talking about. Say, I believe Jesus is the son of God. Save of the whole world. He's not only the son of God, but he's God. Amen? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He's the word that became flesh. He's the personification. <laughs> Ooh. If you want to see what the Father looked like, you look at Jesus. That's why he said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Because he's the represent, he's the, in, he's the visible reputation, representation of the invisible God. The firstborn of creation. He's the visible reality of the invisible reality. Oh, God. Okay. I'm finishing up right here. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. And because we're in Christ, the Bible says he has made us to, to cause us to sit with him in heavenly places. That's your positional mindset. That even though I'm here, but spiritually I'm seated with him yeah. in heavenly places. Because I'm in him. If I'm in him, if somebody, oh man, if my baby is in my wife and my wife sit down before the baby is born, guess what? The baby is seated too. Because she's, the baby is in my wife. So wherever my wife is, the baby is there. Tetabashandala bohosha. We're in Christ, and Christ is in us. Christ in me, the hope of what? That's why, I, that's why the woman of God, Pastor Johnson, preached a powerful message. My God. You got glory in you. Because it's not longer I that live, but Christ lives in me in the life I now live. I live by faith in the Son of God. Verse 2 says, set your affection on things above. Don't get caught up in this worldly stuff. You see where the world is headed? All that it is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and what? The pride of life. Any sin you can imagine floats in between those three categories. Hallelujah. The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it what? I'm closing here. I know I said it before. Set means to position, a fixed position. Don't budge. Stop getting out of that, that fixed position. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in position. Stay in position. Stop getting out of position. That's the difference between a dead sacrifice and a living sacrifice. A dead sacrifice can't crawl off the altar. Mm. A living sacrifice can move. Discipline. Look at your neighbor and say, set your affection on things above. Not on things of the earth, for you are dead. And let's end right here. Your life is hid with Christ and God. Next 30 seconds. I don't have time, but the next time I will have an opportunity, I want to I wanna teach on holiness. Healthy holiness. Genuine holiness. Because it's been so properly... Real holiness is not hard. Mm -mm. It's not complicated. We've made it complicated with theological terms. We have. I'm going to leave this with you right quick. Play some music, Alex. I'm, I'm going to leave this with you right quick. Holiness. Holiness. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say holiness. Holiness is realizing that you have no holiness in yourself. That you're in Christ. And because he's holy, your new identity is I'm holy too. Because when he said, be ye holy for I am holy, he said, I done created you a new creature now. So you be what I created you to be. Real, real holiness, this, 
Scott, Pastor Scott Hubbard says, holiness begins in intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy with Jesus. The secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Lord. We're making it complicated. Jesus is sanctification. Sanctification is a person. He's sanctification personified that became flesh. And the only holiness you have is you partake of his divine nature. No one in here can say, I'm holy. I'm more holier than somebody else. I'm, I'm above somebody. You can say you're holy because you're in Christ, but outside of Christ, you can't say you're holy. Let me leave this. This is so powerful. The only people who can truly kill their sin are those who are preoccupied with Jesus. The more you get caught up in Jesus, your whole appetite for sin changes. Your whole desire change. Look at your name and say, get caught up in Jesus. Get caught up in Jesus. Don't try to do a set of rules. Get caught up in the person. Seek him. Learn of him. Desire him first. Get caught up in him like never before. And you'll see how smooth life in Christ is. It's way better. Don't you feel better when you live in Christ? To be holy is simply to be like Christ. It's to be like him. Simply. He's holy. Holiness is you are becoming like he is in the earth. And until he comes back, we still gonna be, he's gonna be working in us. Look at your neighbor say, Don't, don't give up on me. God is working in me. Don't look down on me. God is working in me. I want to encourage you tonight. It's going to be all right. Because the God we serve is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That's all I got for you tonight. That's all I got. That's all I have. Love y'all so much. Thank you. Put your blessed hands together for our elder Tim Davis. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. I love it. He's so power packed. So power packed. I know he loves to teach on our identity in Christ. And just as he was coming to the end, I think of Daniel 7 when he says, in Daniel, he says, I do not come to present my righteousness, but I come to beg the mercies of God. Mm. For he understands that it's in God that we live and move and have our being. That is just amazing, amazing, amazing. Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now listen, I love that all by myself. Because I love that seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus and you know the authority that you have, that you are seated in heavenly places. When you go in the spirit realm and you understand that everything else is under me, baby. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. But what we're going to do tonight is now it's time for us to lift an offering. But let us, let us in with, let's do a prayer real quick. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you for the teacher of the hour. We thank you, oh Lord, for blessing him with such an impactful pouring out of your spirit through him to us. Father, bless him. Restore everything that he has poured out, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless our bishop, first lady, and our executive pastor in their travels, in their moving about as they go to um, deliver the word of God to the people of God and to do the work of God in all areas of these United States and further out in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the mercy that you have placed upon us for your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Now, Father, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice who does not know you in the pardon of their sin, I ask, oh Lord, that you would arrest their spirit tonight. That you, oh God, would prick their heart that they might ask, 
what must I do to be saved that they might seek you, O oh God, in the midst of all that's going on, whatever confusion might be going on in their life, that you would silence it. And Lord, that you will draw them. We lift your name high because you said in your word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That you might draw someone unto you with loving kindness have I drawn them. And Father, I wish that they would confess this prayer right here, that they would say, Father, I'm sorry of anything that I've ever done that's not like you. I sever every tie, every covenant with everything that's not like you. I announce today that you are my Lord. I believe that you came, you lived, you died, you rose from the dead for my sins, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. I make you ruler of my life. And if anyone, anyone says, that prayer then they are saved and so we thank you we thank you oh lord for your saving grace we thank you for the redemptive work on the cross it's in jesus name that we pray and we ask it amen amen and amen so let's prepare our hearts and minds to give if you could get a seed if you could give anything um, my pastor would not my bishop would not want me to say get anything but find the biggest thing don't find the smallest thing don't get the kind that jingles get the kind that folds amen amen and bring your offerings the ways to give are on our screen right now you can give through cash app give lafar zale venmo paypal you can bring your cash and put it on the altar amen we also have a credit card machine but now is the time to give right now come 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 with your gifts are there any announcements are there any announcements we have a jurisdictional meeting this saturday i do that our first lady is going to be at shakaya preparation on friday night at seven o'clock Fri this friday night at seven o'clock she is going to be bringing forth the word at shakaya preparation for a women's conference let's support our first lady and um, Co-Pastor Cherie Sykes, she does a lot with us with the Women's Conference and First Lady. Let's support that work. It is this Friday at 7 o'clock. Amen? Amen. If our hearts and minds are clear, are we good? Anything for choir practice? Tomorrow, choir practice is tomorrow at 7. I think the men's choir is next Thursday and the youth choir is the Thursday after that. They are trying to come in with numbers. They're trying to get 25. They're trying to get 30 members to sing. So bring your beautiful voice. Let's make a joyful sound, but let's make a good sound because it's going to be up here. In the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Sound like he's talking to me, but let's let's keep it moving. Anything else? Anything else? We ready to go? All hearts and minds are clear. Amen, amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this word. Lord, we ask that you will cause it to go into our heart, Lord, that you said in your word that you will write your laws on our hearts in this new covenant that we are a part of. So, Father, write it on our heart. Make us sensitive to the Holy Spirit as we go throughout the next three, three days. Oh, God, cause us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Cause our ears to hear, our eyes to see, our hearts to understand that we might know. Father, show us the purposes and the plans that you have for us and your people. And show us the timing in which these plans and purposes are to be executed. It is in Jesus' name that we pray all these things. Amen, amen, and amen. Y'all have a blessed night.